Locating and observing faint deep sky objects can be difficult, regardless of whether you use a computerized go-to telescope with thousands of objects in its database, or an entirely manual push-to scope. This video outlines how the Sky Safari Planetarium app can help you vastly improve your success rate in observing deep sky objects with either type of telescope. I suggest you load the Sky Safari app onto a tablet rather than a phone, as that will give you a larger and easier to read display. Also, it helps if you spend a few extra dollars and purchase some extra millions of stars in the app. It is these extra background stars that are the key to finding deep sky objects. But before you get started, we need to open settings in Sky Safari and enter the details of the telescope and eyepieces you will be using. Open Sky Safari and click on settings on the bottom of the screen. Find the telescope section and click on equipment. Under telescopes on the right side of the display, click to either add telescope or edit the details of a listed telescope. Insert the scope name, aperture and focal length. So here we have an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain scope saved into Sky Safari. Adding an 8 inch Dobsonian is just as easy. Do the same for eyepieces. Either click eyepieces or edit an existing eyepiece and enter name, focal length and apparent field of view. Here we've saved 10mm and 24mm PLOSL eyepieces. One thing that makes it difficult to find deep sky objects is the often confusing orientation of the sky when viewed through a finderscope or telescope eyepiece. The lenses and mirrors can flip images upside down, left to right or both. However, Sky Safari can easily flip its display orientation to match what you are seeing through finder scope or eyepiece. This is perhaps the best Sky Safari function for improving your deep sky object success rate. Open the Sky Safari display for any patch of sky. Click on the top right corner of the display and a box will appear. Where it says flip, you have four orientation adjustment options. None, horizontal flip, vertical flip or both flip. Try each option and see how the sky orientation changes. We will use this function extensively later. First we'll look at how to use Sky Safari with a go-to telescope. In settings click display. Click the box for the telescope you will be using, in this case an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain scope. Click the chevron beside that scope and make sure you have selected the 24mm PLOSL eyepiece. Always start with your widest field of view eyepiece. So now you are ready to hunt for some faint deep sky galaxies with your go-to telescope. We'll use twin galaxies NGC 1797 and 1799 in the constellation Eridanus in this example. You need to first complete your usual telescope setup and star alignment procedure. Then, using your telescope controller, key in NGC 1797 and slew to the object. Unless your scope has been perfectly aligned, it is very likely that your scope will slew to a patch of sky that does not show your target galaxy in the eyepiece. This is the number one frustration of all deep sky observing. You are left wondering if the target galaxy is actually in the eyepiece field of view, but too dim to see, or if it's sitting outside the field of view somewhere. The first thing to check is whether your scope is accurately pointing to the correct patch of sky containing Galaxy 1797. In Sky Safari, click Search, key in NGC 1797 and click the search button. You will be taken to an information page for the galaxy. Click center in the bottom corner to show the sky view. 
because earlier you told Sky Safari you are using an 8-inch Smith Cassegrain telescope and 24mm possible eyepiece, the app displays NGC 1797 in the centre of a labelled circle and crosshairs, which represents the actual field of view of your telescope and 24mm eyepiece combination. However, in this example, we'll assume your target galaxy is off to the side somewhere and not in the eyepiece field of view. Insert your 24mm eyepiece into the telescope and take a look. You will see lots of stars, but where is NGC 1797? Now you need to try and match what you see through the eyepiece with the patch of sky displayed by Sky Safari. Look through the eyepiece and see if you can find any prominent stars or distinctive patterns of stars that you can also see on Sky Safari. In this example, you might see an S-shaped pattern of stars and a distorted rectangle shape. Use the flip buttons mentioned earlier to match the orientation of Sky Safari with what you see in the eyepiece. Once they have the same orientation, it is relatively easy to understand which way to gently move the telescope to centre the target NGC 1797. Again, look for star patterns that will help you get the target area in the centre of the eyepiece field of view. If, when you initially look through the eyepiece, you don't see any distinctive stars that are displayed on Sky Safari, you may need to slowly move your telescope around the nearby sky until you do find some distinctive stars, such as these three. Then use these stars and other distinctive patterns to indicate which way you need to move the scope towards the target galaxy. Once the target is centred, you may then swap to a high power eyepiece if you want. So Finding deep sky objects with Sky Safari and a GoTo telescope is all about matching the view orientation and finding distinctive stars or star patterns that can be your guideposts towards your target. The procedure for a push to manual telescope, such as an 8 inch Dobsonian, is a little different. Now you need to use your finder scope rather than a GoTo handpiece in its catalogue. Take a moment to ensure your telescope and finder scope, or red dot finder, are co-aligned. Aligning both on the top of a tree or power pole before sunset is a good idea. You'll need to adjust a few settings in Sky Safari. The first step is to go into Sky Safari and select the telescope you're using. Click Settings and click on Display under Telescope. The tick box for the 8 inch Dobsonian and again you should start with your widest eyepiece in this case the 24 millimeter Plossel. The next step is to tell Sky Safari roughly how wide a field of view your finder scope has. If your telescope has a red dot finder just ignore this next step. Your estimate of finder scope field of view doesn't have to be accurate and 6 degrees is common so we will run with that here. Go into Sky Safari settings and click on display under telescope. At the top of the list you might see choose equipment or perhaps custom field of view. If choose equipment, click the box to tick it, then click the chevron. Click the button for custom field of view and change the view width to 6 degrees. If the custom field of view was listed on the main screen, again Click the box to tick it, then click the chevron and ensure the button is highlighted, then edit the field of view width to 6 degrees. If your telescope uses a true finder scope rather than a red dot and you click back to the sky view display on Sky Safari, click on the top right corner to open the field of view box. Where the box says rings, Click the left box and a 6 degree crosshair circle is displayed, representing your finder scope field of view. If you click the right box, a circle representing your 24mm eyepiece is also displayed. 
you now need to orient the Sky Safari display to duplicate the sky orientation you see through your finder scope or red dot finder. Align your finder on a bright star. Now find the same star in Sky Safari and look for distinctive nearby stars that you can see on the display and in the finder. Use the Sky Safari flip options to make the app display and finder scope orientations match. Now you are ready to manually hunt for deep sky objects. Once again, we'll use NGC 1797 as the target object. Search for it in Sky Safari and center it. Now zoom out and find a bright and distinctive star nearby. In this part of the sky, we have Rigel nearby. Using your finder scope, swing the telescope to center Rigel in the finder scope. Search in Sky Safari for NGC 1797. It shows the galaxy above and to the left of Rigel. It also shows two bright stars just above Rigel and another two bright stars up and to the left that are closer to NGC 1797. These two sets of stars can be guideposts for you to progressively star hop towards the galaxy. You can now look through your finder scope and nudge the scope until the finder is centered on the second set of stars. Now open the field of view box in the top right corner of Sky Safari and click the rings box to display your 24 millimeter eyepiece field of view. Sky Safari now tells you the galaxy is just outside the eyepiece field of view upper right. Now zoom in on the Sky Safari display. Sky Safari shows a horseshoe of stars upper right. Gently nudge the scope to centre that in the eyepiece. NGC 1797 should now be in the right of your eyepiece view. Check on Sky Safari for other useful guidepost stars even closer to the galaxy and nudge the scope towards them. Now your galaxy should be just about in the centre of your eyepiece. You could now swap eyepieces to a higher magnification such as 10 millimeter eyepiece and the galaxy should still be within the eyepiece field of view. Hopefully you can now see your target galaxy. Sky Safari is now informing you you are definitely looking in the right place. If the galaxy is not visible it's because it is just too dim for your telescope to capture sufficient light. The star hopping procedure we just did with the finder scope can also be done using the field of view through your widest eyepiece. This method works well too, but often requires more individual steps as the field of view is so much smaller. So I hope this helps you get Sky Safari set up so you can find lots more deep sky objects.